Welcome to Euro Bangla City SATV News. This is Shibala Alam with our headlines. The government is planning to build another nuclear power plant in the southern region to meet the increased demand of electricity, said Prime Minister. The government takes a move to send list of expatriate cyber criminals spreading anti-state propaganda to Interpol, seeking necessary action. The Director General of World Health Organization has agreed on Pfizer jabs for 12 to 17-year-old, said Health Minister. The construction of the Rupur nuclear power plant went one step further as the first unit of nuclear reactors was installed at the country's only nuclear power plant. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina inaugurated the work through video conference from Ghana Bhabon. Sheikh Hasina also said her government has been considering to set up another nuclear power plant in the southern region to meet the increased demand for electricity. It was a prerequisite to ensure country's overall development. She also added the government is looking for a suitable place in country's southern region region to build another nuclear power plant. The project director hopes that the work will be completed within the allotted time. Science and Technology Minister Yafis Osman presided over the function. Alexei Likachuk, Chief Executive of Russia's State Nuclear Energy Corporation Rosatom, and Alexander Logzin, President of Atomstroy Export Group of Companies, were among others present. The government has taken a move to send a list of expatriate cyber criminals who are spreading anti-state propaganda through various social media platforms to Interpol seeking necessary action. The police headquarters and other organizations of the government are working to the effect. The authorities are also considering legal steps in the country to prosecute those cyber criminals and confiscate their property. A holistic action against such criminals in association with host countries is being considered. Besides expert recommendations, that the government compel Facebook and YouTube to establish their offices in Dhaka so that they can block and regulate contents regularly. The Director General of World Health Organization has agreed on Pfizer jabs for 12 to 17 year old, Health Minister Zahid Malik said today. Already 60 lakh Pfizer vaccine doses are in stock and another 70 lakh will come soon, Minister said during a press briefing on COVID-19 vaccine at the Bangladesh College of Physician and Surgeon BCPS today. Bangladesh Navy, Coast Guard and Fire Service divers have recovered the bodies of two more persons when missing after the boat sank in the Turag River at Amin Bajar in Shava. The divers started to rescue operation on the second day from 8.30 a.m. On Saturday morning, while going to Dipanagar from Amin Bajar Kebalchor in Shavar, a labor boat sank in the middle of the Turag River after being hit by two buckle heads. A team of divers of different forces recovered the body of a woman along with four children till Saturday evening. A Dhaka court today granted permanent bail to film actress Pori Muni in a case filed under the Narcotics Control Act. On August 31st, the court granted bail to Pori Muni in the case. On October 4th, the CID filed a charge sheet against three people, including Pori Muni, in the case. As a result, as the bail period has expired, three have applied again today. Earlier on September 26th, the court ordered the return of 18 signs seized in the case, including the Pori Muni scar. Preparation to receive the goddess are almost at the end. Mandapa is now just last-minute decoration. The arrival of goddess Durga will take place on Monday through 6 puja. This time, the goddess will come on horseback and say goodbye on a cradle. Due to corona situation, the work of the Mandapa is going keeping in the mind of the hygiene rules. Puja will be held in 237 Mandapas in the capital this time. This year, Durga Puja will be held in 32,117 Mandapas across the country. The Durga Chab will end on October 15 in the abandonment of the idol. We are taking a short break. Stay with Euro Bangla City, SATV News. Welcome back. You're watching Euro Bangla City, SATV News.
Now international news. The Taliban warned the United States not to destabilize the regime on Saturday during their first face-to-face -face talk since the U.S. withdrawal as the deadly sectarian bombing raised further questions about their grip on power. As mourners in northern Afghanistan buried their deaths from an attack on the Shite mosque that killed 62, a Taliban delegation told U.S. officials in Doha that any weakening of their government could cause problems for the people. Scores more worshippers were wounded in Friday's blast in Kunduz, which was claimed as the Islamic State group who appeared to be attempting to further shake Afghanistan after the Taliban takeover. The Taliban are seeking international recognition as well as assistance to avoid a humanitarian disaster and ease Afghanistan economic crisis. A State Department official said the U.S. delegation would press the Taliban to ensure terrorists do not create a base for attacks in the country. Indian police have arrested Ashish Mishra, the son of the junior Home Minister Ajay Mishra, as a suspect days after nine people were killed during protests by farmers against contentious agricultural laws in northern India. Police said that he was taken into custody on Saturday following a day-long questioning in Lakhimpum Kheri, a town in Uttar Pradesh state. Farm leaders alleged a car owned by the minister ran over a group of protesting farmers in Lakhimpur Kheri on Sunday, killing four people. They said that the minister's son was in the vehicle at the time. However, Ajay Mishra said his son was not present at the incident but said that the car driven by our driver had lost control and hit the farmers after they threw stones at the car and attacked it with sticks and sword. The driver and three members of the ruling Bharata Janata Party BJP were all killed by the protesters in the violence that broke out after the incident. Taiwan will not bow down to pressure by Beijing and will defend its democratic way of life. President Tsai Ing-wen said Sunday following a spike in incursion by a Chinese warplane into its air defense zone. Self-governed Taiwan's 23 million people live under the constant threat of invasion by authoritarian China, which views the island as its territory and has vowed to one day seize it by force if necessary. She described Taiwan as standing on democracy's first line of defense. The two sides have been ruled separately since the end of the Chinese Civil War in 1949. However, tensions have risen to their highest in decades under Chinese President Xi Jinping, who broke up official communication with Taipei following Taisai's election five years ago and ramped up economic, diplomatic and military pressure. Iraq closed its airspace and land border crossing on Sunday as voters headed to the poll to elect a parliament that many hope will deliver much-needed reforms after decades of conflict and mismanagement. Polling stations have been set up in Iraq early Friday to security forces, asylum seekers and prisoners to vote in early general elections on the special voting day. In Baghdad, security was tight as dozens of army carriers wearing masks and gloves lined up at a polling station set up in a school after voting got underway at 7 a.m. local time. Those who come to the centers to vote will not be allowed to bring their mobile phones inside such sources. Iraq's election is being held here early in a rare concession to the youth-led protest movement that broke out in 2019 against a political class widely blamed for unemployment and crumbling services. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is reportedly considering a visit to the Fukushima nuclear power plant next Sunday. The 17th, if he does go, Japan and its neighbour, including Korea, Korea is paying close attention to what he says about plans to release the radioactive water stored at the plant into the ocean. He plans to visit Fukushima, was reported by the Sanke Shimban and other citing sources with knowledge of the matter. It's likely that Prime Minister Kishida will, if anything, indicate that he's sticking with the plan to release the water. This past week, he said that it cannot be revival of Japan without reconstruction of the areas affected by the earthquake and tsunami in 2011 that damaged the nuclear reactors. His minister said that for industry, Koichi Haguada said last week that the plan to release the water had been momentous decision of the previous administration.
Abdul Qadir Khan, revered of the father of the Pakistan's nuclear program, had died at 85. The Pakistani atomic scientist hailed as the national hero for making his country the world's first Islamic nuclear power, but regarded as the West as the dangerous renegade responsible for smuggling technology for rogue state, was transferred to hospital with lung problems, state-run PTV said. Khan had been admitted to the same hospital in August after contracting the coronavirus. Virus. Before ending, we go to the Euro Bangla City SETV news headline again. Government is planning to build another nuclear power plant in the southern region to meet the increased demand of electricity, said Prime Minister. Government takes move to send list of expatriate cyber criminals spreading anti-state propaganda to Interpol seeking necessary action. Director General of World Health Organization has agreed on Pfizer jab for 12 to 17 years old, said Health Minister. Okay, up to date so far here on Euro Bangla City SATV News and to know the latest news, visit www.sattv.tv. Stay with SATV.